So a couple of days ago, the long-awaited Q4XP came out, and it's been wonderful to see people finally get their hands on this thing. This aircraft has a huge amount of depth to it, both in terms of its systems and its visuals. As for flying this thing, there is a lot to learn. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the heart of the avionics of this plane, otherwise known as the FMS. This is meant to be a quick and easy guide to get you flying the Q400 as fast as possible and to start your journey in learning how to operate this aircraft. Like in most aircraft, the FMS or flight management system plays a key role in navigating and interfacing with the autopilot. For those of you who are new to Flight Sim, you can think of the FMS as a computer that you can use to tell the plane where you want to go and how you want to get there. Unlike systems such as the pressurization, the FMS is continuously used and monitored by the pilots throughout the flight, meaning that it's important to be able to use it efficiently and effectively. We're currently loading passengers on the ground in Southampton for a short flight up north to Manchester. The aircraft has been left for us in a turnaround state by the previous crew, and we've just created a flight plan on Simbrief. Coming down to the FMS, we can already see that there's a bunch of colourful information waiting for us. The way the FMS displays information is through pages, and the page we're currently on is stated at the top of the display, which is telling us that we're on the pause init page. This stands for position initialization, and is the page where the aircraft tells us where it thinks it is located on the planet. You can see that the FMS has already been using GPS satellites to triangulate its position. On the right, we can see the date, and on the bottom, when our current navigation database expires. On the screen, you can also see two arrows, which indicate that there's an option available that can be activated through using the buttons next to the arrows. The bottom one is highlighted in white, since it is asking us to make a decision. As the text would suggest, it's asking us if we're satisfied with the position that it's figured out. We're going to go ahead and accept this by clicking on the button next to accept. You'll notice that a lot of information just went from orange to white, orange signifying that the previous inputs were temporary and that they have now been activated. So now that we're finished with this page, it's time to venture out into the other pages. I'd recommend to mess around with this in the sim and to explore these buttons underneath the screen. Each one of these will take you to a different page and allow you to configure different settings. And over time, hopefully, you'll gradually get a feel for what each one of them means. Let's set up the fuel, for example, by clicking on the fuel page. Notice that for the fuel section of the FMS, we actually have five pages available to us. We can cycle through these either by clicking on the previous and next buttons, or by simply clicking the fuel button another few times. Before we start blindly punching in numbers, it's worth mentioning that filling in these pages isn't strictly necessary. Now, of course, if you're trying to be as realistic as possible, you'll probably want to fill them in. But fundamentally, these pages are simply for situational awareness and not link directly to the autopilot, as is the case with the real aircraft. Although what I would recommend to fill in at a bare minimum is the zero fuel weight and the fuel weight, numbers you can both find in the tablet underneath the load section. Keep in mind that when you give it the zero fuel weight, you no longer have to feed it the cargo and the passenger weight, as these are already included in the zero fuel weight. Now, the FMS will tell us information about our fuel consumption during the flight in the fuel pages. This includes useful numbers such as the fuel remaining upon landing. Next, let's set up our route by going into the flight plan page. This is where we can program a route that can be coupled to the autopilot during flight and is the part of the system that you'll be using the most. Ideally, you'd want to set up as much of the route as possible before taking off so that you can minimize your workload in the air and focus on the flying. The flight plan or FPL page shows a list of waypoints which is currently limited to our departure airport of Southampton or Echo Golf Hotel India. You can see the route that we'd like to input on the screen right now. By communicating this route to the FMS, we can then start to use our autopilot to follow it and it will also pop up on the navigation display. This route starts off by going directly to Nori, and then following the Q41 airway to Silver. We're going to highlight the spot after Echo Golf Hotel India to tell the FMS that we want to enter a waypoint after Southampton. In other words, the first waypoint after takeoff. Let's input Nori and hit Accept. It's turned purple because the FMS has automatically set Nori as the active waypoint. This means that the FMS has drawn a straight line between Southampton and Norrie, as we can see on the navigation display. Now normally, to get yourself from an airport to the start of an airway, which in our case is Norrie, 
you'd use a route called a standard instrument departure. The way we would enter such a route is by first going to the FPL page, which we're already on, and then clicking Menu. Now hit Departs or Departure. Since our first waypoint on our flight plan is the airport of Southampton, the FMS has already set this as our departure and gives us a corresponding list of runways to use. Let's use runway 02 by entering the number 1, since it's the first one in the list. Now the next thing the FMS is asking for is a SID, or Standard Instrument Departure. Normally you'd see a list of departure routes here, but because Southampton is a relatively small airfield, they do not have Standard Instrument Departures. But if you are at a bigger airfield, this page would look like this, and you would select the route by entering its number in the list. In our case though, we're simply going to leave it blank and hit enter without selecting a number. At the bottom, it's giving us an option to review what we've selected and to input it into our flight plan by hitting FPL. Since we don't really have a route to input, we're simply going to leave this page for what it is now and going to go back to our FPL page. Now for Southampton, it's kind of a special case where you'd use charts and procedures which describe how you'd fly the departure using traditional navigation and how to get yourself to Norrie. But that's for another video. So for now, this flight plan is just fine and we can assume that we'll take off and fly directly to Norrie. The next step is to input the airway Q41, which starts at Norrie and goes to Silver. We can do this by again selecting the row underneath the waypoint, which indicates that we're going to input the next waypoint after Norrie. Now hit List, and then Airways on the right. You can see the FMS presents a list of airways that we can join at Nori. Q41 is in the list, which is great, so we'll go ahead and select number 2 from the list and hit Enter. Now the FMS knows that we're joining the Q41 airway at Nori, but it doesn't yet know where we want to leave the airway. That's why it's showing us a list of exit points. We can see from our flight plan that we take Q41 all the way to Silver, so let's select Silver as our leaving waypoint. The end result here is that the FMS has now inputted a waypoint called Cowley after Nori and then goes to Silver. This is fantastic since that is exactly how the Q41 airway is defined between Nori and Silver. What you could have also done is simply inputted Cowley and then Silver as separate waypoints, and that would have worked exactly the same. The reason I'm showing you how to input airways is because this becomes incredibly useful when you're using airways for extended periods of time. For example, imagine if there were 5 or 6 waypoints between Nori and Silver, instead of just one. Then by using the airway, this means you wouldn't have to input every individual waypoint. Let's repeat the same procedure and input the rest of the flight plan. We can look at our route on the navigation display by clicking on the Format button. As we cycle through the pages, we can cycle through waypoints on the display. You can also do this during the flight to verify that you've programmed the upcoming waypoints correctly. After the last waypoint, we still need to tell the FMS what our destination is. So let's put in Echo Golf Charlie Charlie for Manchester Airport as our final waypoint. Now that the FMS knows the destination, we can input an arrival procedure in the same way we would a departure, simply by going to the menu page and then using arrival this time. So now that we're pretty much finished with the flight plan, we can go ahead and copy it over to the other FMS by going into the second UNS, going to flight plan, menu, and exfil or crossfill. On a separate note, if you'd like to input a waypoint at some point in the flight plan, you can do this by selecting the line after the waypoint that you want to come before it. For example, let's say I wanted to input Dane after Trent or Tango November Tango. Then I'd select the line after Trent and simply type in Dane. This won't remove the waypoint that's already there, since this will be shifted to the next line. Conversely, if you'd like to remove a waypoint or a no link message, then you can do this by selecting the waypoint and then del or delete twice. During the flight, you can use a navigation or nav page to show you information about which waypoint you're going from and which waypoint you're going to. This includes things like headings and ranges, which is super useful. On the DTO or Direct To page, you can tell the FMS that you'd like to fly from your present position directly to a certain waypoint, essentially shortcutting the rest of your route. This could happen when ATC asks you to fly direct to a waypoint. 
If you're not feeling entirely comfortable with the FMS, I can recommend going for a flight and experimenting with different waypoints and procedures literally on the fly, if you'll pardon the pun. Ultimately, the best way to learn this stuff is through doing it and not through watching somebody else do it. I'd like to conclude this video with a couple of tips that I think could be useful. Firstly, the FMS is fairly simple compared to other aircraft and has three main parts, fuel calculations, navigation, and vertical navigation. Now in this video we've gone over the fuel and the flight plan, but we haven't really touched upon VNAV or vertical navigation. All I want to say about this is that VNAV in the Q400 isn't quite as sophisticated as it is in other aircraft. It mostly consists of you inputting a certain required descent rate and it crunching numbers as a guidance, somewhat similar to the fuel calculations. So most of the responsibility for managing VNAV falls with the pilot, which includes adhering to altitude restrictions and deciding when to start your descent. So don't let that catch you out, because it does require a little bit of airmanship on our side as the pilots. Finally, I'd recommend to spend every spare moment you have on the flight deck preparing the next phase of the flight. By anticipating the future, you'll be more prepared once it arrives, and it can make a big difference when things start to go quick on the arrival. The FMS and its somewhat quirky and unique behaviour is just one of the things that makes the Q400 such a cool plane to fly, and a lot of fun to learn to master. There's a lot I didn't have time to cover in this video, but hopefully this can provide a nice starting point. Finally, we're planning to do a full-on review of this aircraft soon, so if you like the Dash 8, feel free to stick around. Thanks for tuning in, I hope this was helpful, and I'll see you again next time.